a, an enzyme that helps her digest stuff. She doesn't produce it well herself. She might take a nap. She's got all her crazy toys in there. <laughs> I'm Jessica Lahoos. This is my husband, Derek Lahoos, and our baby, Tabitha. And we've lived here in Warrington for about three and a half years. About Thanksgiving of 2019, we were having ultrasound for our third baby, and when we did that ultrasound, we found out there were some markers of some problems and a likely chromosomal abnormality. It was pretty clear. She had, you know, a little bit of a wrist issue. She was missing her nasal bone, and we weren't clear, but probably a heart defect also. So all of those together said, yes, trisomy 18. So we kind of embarked on a journey of figuring out what that diagnosis meant and what would happen because of that. So the rest of the pregnancy was kind of a whirlwind of just trying to, to figure out what to do. There was a doctor in particular who didn't really want us to have her. He suggested that we terminate the pregnancy um, and kind of encouraged us along those lines. He said that he thinks God would understand in this circumstance and that really shocked me. I said I had to pick my job off the ground because I was like, God would understand. Like, I don't remember there being an asterisk next to the directive to choose life. You know, you can't, you can choose life if, you know, if your baby doesn't have a chromosomal abnormality. Unless it's hard. Or if it's going to be hard or they're going to be disabled. Like, there is no qualifier to that. The directive is to choose life. So that surprised me. But it also steeled our resolve that, no, we're going to choose life. And as long as it is in our sphere of decision making to do so. We viewed her life as a gift from God and we were going to give her the best chance we could for as long as he entrusted her to our care. Uh, February 14th, we've got the uh, church Valentine dinner uh, and I get a call during that and I go over and I take it uh, and we find out there are some uh, indicators on the latest ultrasound saying that she's got a, a serious problem. Our doctor says uh, if we want to see her, uh, we need to have her. Thankfully, everyone rearranged their schedules and we had her that day. She was only 33 weeks, so she was prematurity on top of what all else could be going on with her trisomy. Jess goes one way for recovery. Uh, the baby goes another way, so I'm torn as to which way to go. Um, but I end up going with Tabitha to, to the NICU to, to the first minutes and hours of her life. And that led into learning how to have one of us live basically at UVA each day while the other one stays here and deals with the family and remotes in to see her, but sit bedside, learn what uh, we need to for taking care of her. And that was a, a few months, what, four months in the NICU? Four and a half months. Mm -hmm. It was really a roller coaster, I would say, because there are times when you just feel torn apart, you feel overwhelmed, you don't know what the right decision to make is. So I, I felt crazy. I would say it's, it's a wild ride. We also view her as a gift entrusted to us by God to care for and to do our best with. Um, and so that was kind of our framework of just she's she's valuable she's one of our children disabilities or not um we got a we, duty as her parents we have that duty as her parents to do whatever we can to help her i think our church community all of you guys were incredibly loving to us um we got a lot of dinners from a lot of different people two different times actually one time when she was born and one time when she came home from the NICU so that was an incredible blessing. Um, we had a lot of prayer support. Pastor Danielle came here to pray. We had, later on in the journey, we had a meeting with Pastor Greg to kind of help steal our you know, path forward and help us figure out some questions that had come up for her care in that stage. Um, so it's we've had tons of support from family and friends um, just affirming our decision and helping us to get through the hardest parts. We even had a parade. We had some people from church come and with some neighbors and they, it was during COVID, so they couldn't be nearby, but they had cars and balloons and everything that they came by to welcome her home from the NICU. So that was really special too. You know, even though she has all of these medical needs and things, she's such a happy baby. She's easily the happiest of our three. It's really amazing to see that even though she has these challenges, she's 
content and happy with her life. So it's really uh, actually inspiring to me as her mom. Our boys are going to be hopefully better men for having this experience with their little sister, um, more loving and loyal and compassionate and all of those things that we've always been praying for that our kids would be. So I feel like in a way she's kind of a, a God style answer to those prayers. I think my, one of my biggest pieces of advice that I give out to parents who receive this is that choose the path of least regret because if you choose abortion, there will be a world of unanswered questions that you will have about what the outcome could have been. How severe was it really? What would their future look like? And in our case, you know, it didn't turn out the way that they said it would. So I'm glad and I will always be grateful that we had the opportunity to have a lot of those questions answered, even if her life ends up being short. You've done what you can. Sometimes it's not enough, but you did try. Life is valuable. It's worth living. Trust God that whatever the outcome is, that he's in it. And that's my, my biggest takeaway, is that I relentlessly trust in his hand.